Hey everybody, it's April Henry. Welcome back to my 38th Facebook Live. You can watch all my previous ones on my website or my YouTube channel, aprilhenry.com um, is my website. Uh, my YouTube channel is just called April Henry. Um, my plan is to do these every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time until I run out of topics. Uh, today I'm wearing a completely polyester shirt that I used to love to pack when I was traveling. I think I was supposed to be in Georgia today. Um, uh, so I thought I'd start wearing some of the clothes that I like to wear when I'm traveling. So um, I'm also, I know I had already talked about the end of October, but I am super enjoying this book, which is about a pandemic. <laughs> and it gets, his version of the pandemic is somewhat different than the one we're really living in. But parts of it are eerily identical. So um, in this one scene that I was uh, reading, it said, the new president, still sheltering in the vast Mount Weather bunker with other senior officials, issued a reassuring statement on the emergency alert system that a cure was on a horizon, stores would soon be open again, that baseball season would resume, all eyes, as everyone knew but respectfully reported. So that was kind of funny. Um, anyway, today I'm going to be talking about Act 1 when you're thinking about three-act structure for your book. And tomorrow I'll talk about Acts 2 and 3. So Act 1, basically think of it as the setup. It introduces the characters in the problem. Something interesting has to happen in your first chapter. Something weird, puzzling, mysterious, that disturbs the status quo. This is the starting incident, the inciting incident, that starts everything off. Um, also, in the Act 1, I think you need to show your character caring for someone or something. Even if it's a cat or their elderly neighbor or their mom or a stranger on the subway, it um, it makes us like them better. It makes us like that main character better. Now that thing that they care for doesn't necessarily need to survive the whole book. In fact, their death might just be the thing that propels the story into action. Act one, uh, a lot of people will say it's like um, a quarter of your book. For me, sometimes act one is as short as a chapter. Um, it, Wherever it is, though, it should probably not take up more than, say, 20% of your book. So Act 1 ends with, and these are all ways of looking at the very same thing. Uh, it ends with the story taking a new direction. It ends with the problem being revealed. Uh, or the hero getting a notion of the nature and extent of the forces opposing him. Uh, uh, some people say it ends with a doorway of no return, like you cannot go back to where you were. Um, it can end with the main character knowing what they need to do, but having no idea of how to do it. Or in a detective novel, it's usually when the detective takes on a client. And at that point, the, they're going to have to solve the mystery because that's what they do for a living. Now, the things that go wrong in Act 1 are um, pretty much three things. One is act now. Uh, you should act first in Act 1 and explain later. Um, sometimes people believe, well, I've got to open with a lot of backstory and exposition and explain everything to the reader. And readers want that the now to be what's important. They don't want someone to start with someone and then immediately start telling them backstory. Um, so you either need to cut your backstory or to change where you're starting your story. A second problem with Act 1 is um, happy people in happy land. Writers uh, want readers to like the characters by showing them at length what their lives were like before there's trouble. But the reader is wondering, why should I continue bother reading? reading? The life is good for these folks. They can get along just fine without me. So, um, you, uh, I mean, sometimes readers, readers, writers feel like I need to show readers that these characters are just living their lives. And then 
Only then will people care when I set fire to their lives. But we do not expect a pilot episode of a TV program to give us an hour of character introductions only. We don't go out on a date to spend the first date at the person's parents' house looking at their baby books and photo albums. So uh, you need to start with something happening right away and only put in backstory later and when you absolutely have to and as little as possible. The third problem with uh, openings, act ones, is the lure of the lyrical. You want to impress people with your beautiful language, um, your big words. You want to open with weather or a lyrical description of the landscape, but that's not enough to keep them reading on their own. So you need to give them a problem that they can care about. So um, tomorrow I'll be talking about Act 2 and Act 3. You, again, as I said yesterday, you do not need to, um, you don't necessarily need to map out your story and to have an Act 1, Act 2, Act 3 carefully delineated in your head. I think anyone who is a reader knows how stories work. Um, it's a way to think about a story, but it's not necessarily, or it's definitely not a checklist list or a fill in the box thing. It's just to help you think about how your story is going to work best. So until tomorrow, when I talk about Acts 2 and Acts 3, I'll see you guys then. I uh, hope you have as productive a day as you can. Bye-bye.